from the island of Enchantment, Puerto Rico. Recording from the 280 Studios in Las Piedras, Puerto Rico. This is Ramon Manzano. And in the other side of the ocean is the Master Sergeant of Running, Mr. Jose hey, Otero. That's right, that's right. We are here in the National Capital. Uh, welcome to the new episode. Uh, and you see it. Talking English today, double language. Hey, it sounds good. Hey, um, uh, we are happy to be back and uh, give you great information, like always. And uh, listen to us every couple of weeks. Uh, we get new uh, new information for you with new uh, episodes every two weeks. So Mansan is always keeping us on, uh, straight on, on that and. <laughs> Having having the the schedule always full, <laughs> trying to get you the the best yes, uh, uh, for all the runners around and the runners in the world. Uh, uh, thank you for the people in the UK, uh, in in the states, in different states, in Canada, Australia. Uh, hey, hi to everybody down there. And hey, let's start this. And if this is the first time you hear about us, this is Correndo for Sobre 50 podcast. It's a podcast about running. We are two 50 year old plus runners from Puerto Rico, but uh, Otero is living right now in Washington, D.C. Our main goal is to inform you, to give you a lot of good content about running. Uh, usually, this podcast is not made in English, usually, it's in Spanish, but This is our third, uh, I guess it's the third episode in English. So English is not our main language, so you have to pardon us any mistakes or any uh, sort of accent that may, we may have. But anyway, we're very happy to let, be... Let, let me let me make something clear. It's for people over 50, but we have said everybody. Everybody's a runner. Uh, a lot of people, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, even 80s, uh, uh, listen to us and uh, hey. You are welcome here. This is a, a house at, uh, for runners. So come over here and uh, listen to, to our episodes and yeah, you're going to get uh, real good and information. We thank, you. we thank you for your listening. Thank you for, to be here with us. And uh, let me tell you that Corriendo Sobre 50 is brought to you by Logistics Event Management. This company founded in 2015 and they make uh, road events, uh, 5K, 10Ks and half marathons. And you can cut that debt in 787-244-0056, 787-244-0056. And also, they, we come with the sponsorship and support of Swim Lab Puerto Rico. If you need to learn how to swim or you need to perfect your technique in the open waters for any, any event like a triathlon or Ironman, you can contact them at 787-205-2085. Today, we have a... A guest that is comes from the United States. He have a great company, a, a, a great foundation, and we are very interested uh, in me. his initiative. We we met him in the uh, expo in Fort Lauderdale yeah. uh, for the Publix A1A marathon, and he had a booth down there. And we are very interested in what he is do doing for uh, uh, under the underserved communities and. Uh, other other uh, things that they do around the world. Uh, let me introduce you to Mo Hakem. He's the CEO of Sneaker Impact. Welcome, Mo, to our podcast. Uh, very, we're happy to have you here. Ramon, Jose, thank you for having me. And uh, pleasure to be around. Thank you for being here. Sneaker Impact is a nonprofit organization that collects gently used sneakers and donates them to underserved communities around the world here. Uh, and uh, is, that's for us, that's a great, a great uh, enterprise. And we wanted to have him here. Uh, Mo, can you tell us when uh, Sneaker Impact started? Small correction. Uh, Sneaker Impact is a, is a for-profit social enterprise. Okay. And our main focus is to reduce waste Uh, and ship sneakers to developing countries and working with micro business merchants. Ramon, 87% of the public here in the States don't recycle their sneakers. 87% throw their perfectly fine sneaker and footwear in the, in the landfills. 
even though 24% of the world populations are infected with soil borne diseases because they don't have access to footwear. Now, as runners, you know, runners go through their shoes every three to 400 miles, maybe 450, 500 miles, but an average between 300 to 350 miles, a runner goes through their shoes. And their shoe, and if you look at those running shoes, they're perfectly fine. They're in great condition, but the cushions are not there for running. And on all these shoes, we're ending up in the landfills. I've seen the need by traveling to Africa, to Central America, to South America, to Asia. There's a huge need for this product. So our main focus is to reroute these shoes from landfills and ship them to developing countries through micro businesses by a hand up, not a hand out. So people are actually paying pennies on the dollar, right? And they're refurbishing these sneakers and place them where they belong, not in landfills, or on people's feet. So so you you are giving more life to, to tennis shoes than normally will end up in a in the landfill. And uh, that's a good that's a good initiative, a good business uh, model. I mean, uh, and if people understand also, it's not the same like uh, a person in, in a third world country can buy a, a shoes, a tennis shoes like we do here in the United States, paying $150, $175 per, per pair. Uh, normally, how much it costs a, a, a person in, in a development country uh, a, a pair of shoes? Well, look, uh, it's an interesting uh, point that you just made. And I'm, I'm SRP for a Nike or for an Asics or for a uh, Hoka, if it's, if it's, if the tag price is $150, $200 in the United States, it's going to be the same worldwide because this, this is the MSRP. Most people cannot afford these engineered running shoes. Uh, so a shoe in, in Haiti, Dominican Republic, Costa Rica, El Salvador, in Bolivia, in Peru, and in Nicaragua, it's not at least for the for the communities or for the micro business per- merchants we service, it's not a fashion statement. It's a it's a form of transportation. That's how people get from point A to point B. So and it's <laughs> and Jose, it goes more than three hundred miles for sure. So. Oh, so, oh my God! Definitely. <laughs> but uh, uh, what what is the cost of that people paying for those shoes? when you refurbish them and, and send it to those micro businesses down there? Well, well I, normally, I, I know that that will depend where it's at and all that stuff, but... Uh, oh, no, that's a fair question. So it all depends. So not, as you know, some people run with their shoes until they're all out and some people, their hose stuck out of the shoes and other shoes are like in a great condition. It all depends how much value is in the shoe. So there's no refurbishment that is being done here in Miami. All the work is gets done by the micro business merchants. If it's in Haiti or in Central America, South America, or Africa, the merchants, the micro business merchants do, does their own work. The more work, so there's stitching involved, you know, stitching, you know, the running shoes, they have the yeah. threads. So mm-hmm. there's painting on the side, there's washing. So they can get from, Five dollars to twenty-five dollars, twenty dollars a pair. We are, I mean, we're we sell it by the pound. So when Sneaker Impact sells those containers, they're selling by the pound, and we're hoping they get as much as they can out of these shoes. But the only way they're going to get that is by giving it love and putting some work into those footwear. I hope that makes some sense. No, it's a it's a great initiative and it's a great business. I mean, uh, you really. It's a recycle business. <laughs> in, in reality, uh, you recycle something that will, in other words, will end up uh, be a problem for the environment. You refurbish, and uh, somebody else can use it for, for I don't know how long, but they will use it for a lo- as long they they are usable for them. Jose, some of the newer shoes are taken up to a thousand years to decompose. A thousand wow. years. So, yeah. and yeah, I mean, look, people are going to use it. I've been there and the, the life, they're prolonged the life of the shoes for as long as it could take. And we're talking about like highly engineered 
footwear, if it's any of the, the higher end brands, those shoes mm-hmm. are engineered and made for comfort. So yeah, it's uh, it's true. It's, some of those shoes are taking such a long time to decompose into it. I see. What what one other question? I'm sorry, Ramon. <laughs> I keep you very up to no, this no. one. Hey, additional additional to sneakers, do you refurbish any other? Uh, I mean, do you resell any other uh, uh, shoes, or it's only sneakers? Well, sneaker impact. Well, look, I'm a family. I was born in this industry at the. After college, I moved to Africa myself and worked with micro business merchants. Uh, at age 29, 28, I was between Europe, Central and South America. So we work with other items as well. But the focus, the need is for sneakers it's because of the comfort, because of, you know, it's a transportation mode. For the meantime, sneaker impact, the main focus is sneakers, any kind. If it's running, basketball, casual, lifestyle, all kinds of sneakers, any conditions. And, and and we're trying to bring awareness and spread the message to universities, to schools, to marathons, uh, lots of retailers signing up and tons of gyms are coming on board as well. That's excellent. Let, let's talk about logistics. Let's talk about how uh, sneaker impact receive the shoes and how you ship them to other parts of the world how how, how what is the logistics in all this uh, so uh, ramon we have two different programs we have a program for the for the retailers and for the corporate world where they contact us and we'll send them you know boxes beautiful boxes and, and you know all aesthetics and colorful with the miami colors with our brand and it had each, and a, so a package would have eight boxes with a prepaid chip and label. And uh, they'll place the boxes there, fill them up. At no cost to them, a running shoe retailer or an office building, they, they, the only work they have to do is tape the box and FedEx will pick it up because it already has a prepaid chip and label. So they can, corporate could go to, uh, www.sneakerimpact.com send a message that they're interested to become a corporate partner. Now, individuals also can request a bag, a biodegradable bag that could fit up to six pairs. And again, they'll just go to www.sneakerimpact.com, click recycle, fill up their information, and within seven days, they would receive a uh, to the, at no cost to them, a bag with a prepaid chip and label uh, to their residents. And all they have to do is drop that bag off at a FedEx office or a FedEx associate's office. And I can attest that that system works like a, like a clock because uh, when we met in the Fort Lauderdale, uh, a friend of mine asked you for your information and she did the process on the, on the internet. Uh, she received the bag very fast, and uh, um, with all the information, all the shipping labels, she only uh, placed the, the, the tennis shoes. She's asking for all the runners that she knows that have tennis to dispose or to recycle to add them to the, bu- to the bag. One of the questions that I have is, do you have a minimum amount of uh, sneakers per bag? Or if I ask you for a bag, I can only send you one pair? Or how, how does it work? Ramon, this is a used shoe industry. So, and, and we're trying to reduce carbon footprint. So you can keep the bag as long as you want if you're you know, an interested party. Just try to put, fill up the bag. Fill up the bag five to six, even if you can try to put seven pairs inside, try to fit as much as you can. And yeah, it, it is an issue when partnership one pair of sneakers. It's an issue because, I mean, the freight is expensive and we're trying to make it as easy as possible for the running community to dispose of their old sneakers. Now, if you don't have five to seven sneakers, please keep the bag there until you have enough. Now, that, that is good to know because I, I was I, I was under the impression that, that if I ask for a bag and I have a one or two pair of shoes I could send it back, but you, you're right. The more shoes they can send you back, the, the better. 
And uh, it's going to be better if you have a running team or something like that. If they want to uh, uh, add more shoes to the bag, it's gonna be it's gonna be better. You have any uh, also of, of the bags of mail and everything? You have drop off locations around, I suppose, Florida or something. Where are the drop off locations? We have drop off location nationwide. So if you go to our website, you'll see where we've recently partnered with Rack Room. Uh, it's like a big retailer here, and they're, they're in like almost most of the malls in America. And they have our box. We're with the Planet Fitnesses, Orange Theories, certain locations, right? Where different uh, running retail stores, definitely all South Florida, with the fleet feeds of the world, uh, um, independent running store companies. So Ramon, the movement is going. We're in. I would. I can say we're in all 50 states, and and we're just we're just starting, right? This is this is just the beginning. We're always getting contacted. There's always open dialogue with different brands, uh, different retailers, and we're talking to different counties to have this as an initiative, county initiative. And I mean, we have some really good news, really big news coming in the next, on Earth Day. Uh, one of the major counties in, in the States is, wants to be part of the sneaker impact movement. So that's going to be great. But going back to Puerto Rico, we're always looking for ambassadors uh, and for individuals and advocates to advocate our, our movement and bring awareness and spread the message with the run clubs and with the retailers there, with the specialty running shoes retailers. So if you're listening and you want to be involved, we we're always looking for, for the right partner to just be a drop-off location in Puerto Rico. That's excellent. Yeah, it's, it's an environmental uh, issue uh, that it, more in Puerto Rico because uh, we only have like two um, landfills now right now that are working and they're getting full. <laughs> so less things that we put in those landfills better for us as an island because eventually we're going to have to pay for transport the 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 trash somewhere and that is going to be real costly so it's a it's a great initiative and uh, uh, i'm pretty sure if you contact mo uh that would be a great um partnership to do in the island because i know it's hundreds thousands tens of thousands uh sneakers uh throwing to the to oh, the you, you may be surprised right a, a couple of years ago when we were part of a running team here in las piedras uh pura vida runners uh they started a movement to collect shoes to send them to colombia i remember and um uh, we uh they made a 5k and w uh, the r part of the registration for the 5k was bringing shoes to to uh for colombia so uh I remember we, we, we had so, so many boxes and boxes and boxes of shoes that we, uh, they, had, they had those shoes a couple of weeks because we had to deal with them with the post office of how to uh, ship those shoes to Colombia uh, and deal with customs mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Uh, and at the end, we were able mm -hmm. to send them to Colombia and we received a video from, the, from one of the running teams in Colombia. Um, uh, thank you, video. Uh, they showing the shoes that they received from Puerto Rico and they were very grateful. They were very good shoes because as, as you said, uh, you, you only put them only for 300, 400 miles. And basically they're good. Uh, at, at least on the top of the shoe is they are perfect. Uh, maybe some wear, wear and tear in the, in the bottom, but it's not something that someone that need uh, shoes for the daily living is going to complain about. And, and that's excellent. Uh, Mo, uh, when uh, we forgot to ask you, the year uh, Sneaker Impact started. Well, look, uh, I I personally started this before I was born. This the recycling, the upcycling, the micro business uh, movement. But during the pandemic, uh, Ramon, like my brother started riding a bicycle, my my wife started the cooking, uh, the pastries and stuff. You know, during the pandemic, we all found our mm -hmm. hobbies, and uh, my neighbor started swimming and building a pool. <laughs> so yes. I wanted to learn more about the industry that I was in. I thought I was doing a whole lot. Like we go through in my company, Coastal Export, we go through I would say 
up to a million pairs of used shoes on a monthly basis that we ship out. And I thought we're doing a great job, right? And according to all the Googles and all the statistics we found, that we are between us and everybody else in the industry, the non-for-profit, the for-profit recyclers, we're only doing 13% of the sneaker and the footwear recycling. And 87% don't recycle, not because they don't want to. There is not an easy, efficient, cool way to do so. Another issue, 92% of the public want to be involved, but don't know how to. So I called my team and I said, let's let's make this. Let's make, let's open the Instagram. Let's start going to expos. Let's, you know, talk to more retailers. So it was only to, during the pandemic, I would say two years ago, that we started mm-hmm. sneaking back and I'll tell you we're getting I mean all positive uh, how busy you are now (laughs) we're very busy like today we received three truckloads of FedEx dropped off their boxes today wow and wow the problem is 400 million pairs and this number is not totally accurate according to my my friend at the FDRA the Federation of the Shoes Association 400 million pairs end up in the landfill every year Wow. But again, I think that number is really, really, really conservative because this year alone, 20 billion pairs of footwear were made globally. 20 billion. So, I mean, where's the other stuff? Does it evaporate? No, it's still here. And, and it's, I mean, I love the story with Colombia. And look, if, if you're listening and you have somebody in Colombia, you have somebody that needs those, sneaker, those sneakers, don't give them to us. We should be the last resort, you know? If you are a running club and you know somebody in Africa or you know somebody in Peru, you know somebody in Bolivia, give it to them. We are all like under, we have one goal is to reduce waste. And if you can give it to any micro business, have them create a small economy. This should all be a, a hand up, not it's a hand up, not a hand out, you know, movement strategy. So if, you, but if you know somebody that you can help, and they need those sneakers. Those sneakers are are a mode of transportation. This is their Honda. I only <laughs> call them Hondas. Um, so, uh, oh, um, Mo, so if people around the world, when they listen to the, the episode, uh, whatever they are, do they want to, to contact you to ask you how to start it or how to, do you mind if they uh, uh, no, send you a message or trying to contact you? Um, and you okay. give it some, uh, some type? No, email. If you can write my email up also, Jose, if you don't mind. Or more, no, they will. People, please email me. I'm, I'm here to help. If We're always looking for ambassadors in Europe. We're looking for ambassadors in you know, South America. We're looking for ambassadors in you know, whatever. Whoever wants to be involved and be part of the movement, you know, you know, contact me directly and we would love to start a dialogue. Hey, hey Mo, I, I see a passion for, for conserving the, conserving the, 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 na- the, the nature, conserving the, the environment. From where did this come from? And there's no planet B, Jose. I mean, I have yeah. three kids myself and there's no planet B. And also, if we can, can if we can be sustainable and also, uh, you know, 24% of the world population are infected by soil-borne diseases. 24%. So one in each, one in four individuals are infected with soil-borne diseases because they don't have access to footwear. And you look at your landfills in Puerto Rico or here in Miami or in Washington, D.C., where you're at, and you see these landfills. And don't quote me on that. There's a percentage. It's, it's not, it's like 3 two, four percent between footwear and apparel. It's all ending up in landfills because the style... The comfort is not there and the style is not cool anymore. So if we're able to take that initiative and and do it, and by the way, when we ship Ramon, when we ship the stuff, we ship it by the trip container loads. We don't ship by the small boxes when it goes out. So it gets shipped by the container loads globally. Uh, question. Oh. Uh, you, you told us before that uh, shoe companies are starting to reach and accept your mm-hmm. movement. But how about governments? How about local authorities? Uh, are they available? Are they open 
to help you uh, with your your uh, your uh, with the sneaker impact? Well, uh, Ramon, it's uh, yes. We are we are talking to local governments, and we are talking. Uh, you gotta be careful when you're talking to big brands. Sometimes there's an NDA, and they want to keep it on the down low. But we are talking to brands. We're talking. One of the major retailers have dropped our boxes in each and every mall in America, or most of the malls in 36 wow. states, the rack room stores, uh, where uh, other retailers are in open dialogue on other brands. Uh, with the governments, we have some big news coming on Air Day. I'll let you and, uh, and Jose know about it. It's going to be pretty cool and pretty big news. Nice, nice. It's really, uh, um, this is the new us right now. And we need to, to help the nature to not get worse than what it is right now. And this is one way that we can help. And people that are listening to us today, um, take note of this and trying to, to recycle the most possible. Uh, that is a big problem. People don't recycle. They, they like to throw things away and uh, normally they end up in landfills and, and places that, like we were saying earlier, they stay in the, in, in the, in the soul for a thousand years or maybe more. Uh, that is, is really a, a concern. Uh, talking about the pandemic, how, how did you did in those times, you know, that people couldn't get out And, and people were afraid of contact with other persons. Uh, how that have affect the distribution of the shoes and how they could send it to you? Did you, did you saw uh, uh, some slump on the shoes that you were receiving or any, any kind of, of issues on those times? Well, look, during the pandemic, we've never received so many footwear and apparel like the pandemic. People went home, <laughs> Ramon, uh, you know, <laughs> shut the doors and they start cleaning their closets. So the amount of footwear and the amount of apparel that came out of the pandemic, it it wasn't like nobody, all the recyclers in the States, was we were not uh, capable of to accept all this stuff. So the, the, the huge abundance of the uh, stuff that came in, yeah, we were not ready for it, no. But personally, we, we stayed home for some time, my wife and I and my kids. And you know, it, it, it was uh, strange times, as you know, and we're still living with it. I mean, until now, people forgot about the pandemic two or three years ago, and they're blaming all this stuff to, to different political parties. It's not, man. It's a pandemic. The inflation is here because of the pandemic. I mean, it's... The overpricing, I mean, but people forgot about the pandemic. So, so let, let's talk about, yeah. let, let's talk then on your side. Now you're receiving shoes from people that you don't know, and there were no clear guidelines about uh, how to handle other people's stuff. So the, the how did you manage then all those shipments? You said you, you were overloaded with shipment of shoes. How did you handle it uh, with all the COVID stuff and no guidelines of how to deal with that. Well, look, the good thing is our mother company, it's a, it's a big recycling. So we work with recycling partners. And when we receive our product, it comes in big Gaylord boxes, unlike sneaker impact where it's focused into the individual bags and the retailer aesthetic bags. Coastal export, the mother company, deals with big volumes and it comes in gear load. So if if the truckload is full and it comes a certain way, then we'll pick it up. So, I mean, but we ran out of, we ran out of room. So how did we deal with it? <laughs> At some point during the <laughs> pandemic, we said we're done. <laughs> <laughs> we ran out. But guys, it's, uh, it's amazing the amount of, of apparel and shoes that came out of people's home within like these two or three months. Wow. Um, out of curiosity, uh, um, beside you and your family, who else is involved in your family? Your your whole family or are you just you involved in this uh, movement? No. So my father started this in 1967 in Beirut, okay. Lebanon. 
and mm -hmm. uh, he had also uh, recycling clothing and shoe warehouses in Belgium, Brussels. In the 80s, he moved to the States. So we're four brothers and all four of us are involved. And one oh, of my sisters is involved. So the whole family is involved in this because this is what we know. I've decided to target the 87%. I've targeted, and it's, you know, it's not easy, right, to target the individuals with the marketing and the social media and the beautification of the boxes. So I personally decided to start, you know, catering and bringing awareness and spreading the message to the 87% that are throwing their stuff in the trash. I see. Oh, that's great. I mean, that's... Uh... Family is, is into this business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you something. We are, we saw you on on the X one. We got very interested in your, in your business and your movement. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 we, we, I can do my thing, my my thing here in Puerto Rico. I, I, as a matter of fact, one of one of our main sponsors is a race producer here in the island, and I'm pretty sure they will be very interested to uh, promote and maybe in their events have some kind of uh, drop off or something. I, I can assure you this is going to happen, but we'll make our best to to talk to them. And mm -hmm. also, uh, we, before we started recording, mm -hmm. uh, you said you received a call from a corporation in the United States. I work for mm -hmm. uh, a multinational corporation mm -hmm. here in Puerto Rico, and, and I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. because a lot of people in the, in the, in the company runs And, and I know uh, mm -hmm. this is going to be a very interesting uh, idea for them. So what I can tell you is on my side, I can start spreading the, the, the word about this. Mm -hmm. um, you have our podcast on your service. Definitely we can. If you, if you, can, if you have a, another partner that speaks in Spanish, we can do another episode in Spanish. And we are very strong in North, uh, in uh, South America and in Spain and, and Europe. So we can spread the word to those countries and we can do our part. Uh, we are definitely um, very happy to have you here and we are on your side. Um, and uh, everything we can do to help, we will do it. Yeah, it's a, it's a great initiative. And uh, um, I mean, it's... Uh, I'm pretty sure. I, I, let me tell you, my wife only, you got like 20 <laughs> pair of shoes that I can ship. My wife has is, only uh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm a witness of that. <laughs> it's no good business for me, but hey, hey it's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I want to introduce you guys to the founder of the Miami Marathon, Frankie Ruiz. Frankie Ruiz, he speaks Spanish. You guys probably heard of Not Frankie. Sure. He's the founder of the Miami Marathon. And Frankie, like, he's been our biggest advocate. I'll tell you something, uh, guys. Uh, you know, Frankie, since day one, and uh, I contacted him and said, Frankie, I want to do this. And first, he came to the world. He, he looked at my stuff. He said, Mom, and look at this. You have... Are you sure? I said, yeah, we want to, I want to target, you know, we want to make it convenient and we'll make it cool and fun for individuals to recycle. And he said, Mo, I have your back a hundred percent. So since day one, Frankie Ruiz has been our biggest supporter in this. And, uh, That's you know, great. from the Miami marathon to the, to the Chicago marathon half now flying peg, uh, in Cincinnati called us and they want, like we're, we're doing the flying peg. We were in Los Angeles Marathon, I would say, maybe a month ago, in March. So it's it's so, been really cool. It's been a really cool place. I, I was invited to Harvard to speak to their students on circular economy. We're talking to – we were always invited to different – Miami International School of Design did their final exam on circular economy and sustainability in my class, in my warehouse. So they brought their students – It's been really cool. It's been a cool journey and a lot of fun stuff. And you guys, next time you guys are in Miami, please stop by. We'll show you. We'll give you a tour. Definitely. Definitely. And if you if you can talk to Frankie. We will. We will. If you can Definitely. talk to Frankie, Definitely. we can have hey, him uh, here in the, in the in the podcast in, in a second. Because uh, I know he, is, he has uh, 
He has one of the main uh, runs in, in Miami. Mm -hmm. Miami Marathon is, is, in a, is an institution. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, you, if you are working with him and he's working with you, I'm, I'm pretty sure you have a, a great success uh, uh, with, the, with the tennis issue. Uh, also, we want to know if, if you have any uh, like promos and documentation or things that you can send us We can, you can use our uh, social media uh, to promote uh, your, your cause and promote the, the business because I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people interested to be a part of this. So don't be, don't be shy. Whoa. If you need to send us all the information that you have, please do, and, and we'll, we'll share it to, the, to our audience. Uh, Mo, I was going to ask you... Um, In the near future, what is the next uh, places are you going to be, uh, like, what kind of races you're going to be uh, around um, to promote your your? Any initiative? other exhibits? Well, look, uh, I'll tell you something. And, and I apologize. I don't know most. And if I forget somebody from the, if the guys are listening and I forget somebody, please excuse me. We are invited uh, to uh, the Flying Pig. They have 40,000 runners there, which is a pretty big race. We're invited to uh, different programs here, like Runners, thanks to Renee uh, Grant at Runners Depot. So she's, we're doing a, a run with Runners Depot, the all five stores. We're always, uh, we're going to uh, one of our, we're doing a run somewhere in Boston with Brian, Brian and Herberty, who's our director for like, uh, who handles the, the marathons. There's a lot of events. I'm, I'll send it over to you, but I don't want to miss anybody. But, you know, there's always <laughs> events going on. There's always events going on. And, and it's, it's been just a really cool journey. It's, it's been a really cool journey. Talking to really cool people, bringing awareness and spreading the message. And, and I always say, if you, like, my main promo, Ramon, is... There is no planet B. We're not the only outlet. We should be our last, the last outlet. Number one outlet, if you know a homeless guy down the street, right? If you know somebody in a different country that needs those shoes, if you're able to send them. You know, this always, you know, think about these guys that need them the most. And, and But sneaker, to make it convenient, move volume, sneaker impact is here. And yes, we're making a difference. And yes, we're working with micro business merchants. And but we want to make this as a hand up, not a handout movement. Thank you, thank you, Mo. It's a it's a great uh, great thing to say. And uh, you you're really promoting the 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 better world, you know, a better world for everybody. So, guy, thank you for giving me the chance and you know putting me on your platform. Appreciate no problem. it. Let, let me let me finish the podcast with the usual announcements and this time it's going to be in English so it's going to be fun uh, Corriendo Sobre 50 is in your favorite podcast platform if you want to listen to other episodes of Corriendo Sobre 50 please go to the search bar and write Corriendo Sobre 50 this is in Spanish so uh, please uh, subscribe share our content Uh, we are in all social media, Facebook as Corriendo Sobre 50 Podcast, in Twitter as Podcast, C as in Charles, S as in Sam, 5-0, and in Instagram as Corriendo Sobre 50. Please uh, follow us in all the social media. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. This interview is going to be in the podcast platforms and also in video version in YouTube. In all the information of Sneaker Impact is going to be in the podcast notes where you can reach them. Uh, also, a most uh, email if you want to contact him. If you want to be an ambassador of this movement, please don't be shy. Contact him. I know there's a lot of running groups in Puerto Rico that can help. Uh, there are uh, hundreds of running groups in Puerto Rico and thousands of runners that are part of running groups here in Puerto Rico. Also, if you see them in any expo in the United States, please go to them, talk to them. Uh, I know that, as I saw, I saw in the expo, you, you can correct me, you had a box in the expo receiving uh, sneakers there, right? Yep. Okay, so if you yep. see them in the expo, or if you know they're going to be in the expo, please bring your uh, sneakers and 
uh, give them to them so they can reach to a person that needs them uh, like, like he says like a mode of transportation more than a, a sneaker or something like that so thank you Mo for your time uh, thank you for all the things you are doing and thank you everybody any last words any last words uh, uh, Mo you want to oh, say you said it all guys thank you and appreciate the time it's all about bringing awareness spreading the message and you guys have said it all and I thank you for all the love Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Thank you for Appreciate listening it. to the Corriendo Sobre 50 English version. Thank you. See you soon. Please subscribe. Please share. Please follow. See you guys. Thank you, Mo. Send your messages to us.